All right, so today's the big day. We got the brandy wine and it's going on the cutlass. So I'm looking forward to actually getting some of this color finally on the body of this thing after all that work we put into it and uh, all the videos that you guys seen of us getting it ready for this stage to actually get some of the candy on it. So we're using the brandy wine and I got a custom mix I made up with a, a little bit lighter than the normal House of Colors gray to give it a little bit more pop is what I'm looking for and uh, give it a look that I like. So today's the day we get it done. So let's go ahead and put some of this on this car. We got to get these things prepped out. We're going to scuff them up and scuff up the trunk. We got to do inside the fenders and uh, we're going to get this thing done. So let's do it. So we got the jam sanded out on it and uh, we went ahead and started taping them up because I'm going to rebag this again and tape right along the edge. When you guys tape this, tape right along the edge. Don't come out too far because then you got to sand that line off. So kick it right on the edge of this here when you tape it and that way when you go to sand it, it comes down nice and easy because you're going to have quite a bit of build with this candy because you got a lot of layers of paint. So just the tip. Don't tape it too far in, but make sure you tape it close to the edge. So we're gonna, we got it all sanded out here and we gotta spray the uh, hinges for the trunk too while we're at it. So we're gonna shoot them with the trunk. This jam here is all sanded out and we're gonna start taping it up. But I made a decision to leave the fenders on the car because you guys know how it is when you gotta take these fenders off and then you put them back on with these bolts and these are very visible to this car when you open the door and I don't want to have them all marred up with a candy paint job and had to touch everything up. So I can get to everything on this car with it, with the fenders on it because most of this car is actually black underneath. The whole firewall is black, under the hood's black. And I just have to spray the tops of these fenders here. So we're going to go ahead and prep these out and shoot them on the car. And that way all my bolts are going to stay good and uh, we'll have a better, cleaner job and I won't have to adjust everything back for this car to fit because those doors line right up the way these fenders are. And I was gonna pull them, but I thought about it and I said, you know what? Let's pull the hood, pull the hinges off and then we'll be able to get access to these fenders better and get them uh, shot too. So just a executive decision I made and I think it's a better decision than taking them off because I can get to everything I need to doing that. So. We're gonna finish this up and we'll be shooting candy on it. All right, so we have the hood off and I wanted to show you guys what I was talking about. See how this is all black? The back firewall, I wanna leave that all factory looking. So when you open up the hood, it looks original because I have all the original stuff under here. So we're gonna go ahead and tape this off and uh, it's a lot easier than taking these off and having to realign all this stuff back up. Now all we gotta do is align the uh, hood hinges back up and we'll be good to go. So. We got the hood off, the hood hinges off, and now we're gonna go ahead and prep these out and then uh, we'll be ready because the rest of it's already prepped out, taped up and waiting for the bag. So let's do that. bagged up and ready to go it's cleaned it's wiped and I just got to tack it now so this back here was being a pain because this car is all undercoated I couldn't get nothing to stick so I had to use magnets on the bottom if you guys get into a bind with some of these older cars and you can't get stuff to hold use magnets and it actually holds it up to the metal even if you can't get the tape to stick so we got it all ready to go and you can even use the magnets in some of these cross flow booths on your plastic to keep it from blowing in the wind. So 
We're ready to go. We're gonna start basing it out and uh, hitting it with the candy. But one tip I wanna tell you when you're doing these candy jobs, because I learned from my own mistakes was years back on one of my first candies, I went ahead and candied the jams and uh, didn't put enough candy on it because it was uniform. I thought that was where the color was gonna be. And then when I got done on the outside, because it takes a lot more coats when you're doing the outside than the jams, because you wanna make sure that you're even so you go light. And, the end, and I ended up having uh, the color not match too much on the jams. So make sure you get enough candy on the jams. That way you know that you're gonna match the outside because I, I learned from my own mistakes on that and that's a good tip to you guys. Make sure you get enough candy on it and check your chip that you had and make sure that you're good on your jams. That way when the outside's done, it all matches up. So we're gonna get ready to start basing it out. And uh, here we go. We got one coat on, I went with a nice light coat. That way it uh, doesn't have any crazy reactions. Always go light on your first coat of base when you're doing jams, because uh, with all that you know, grease and all that stuff in the jams, you got more chance of uh, having a little bit of problems with reactions, but we primed it and everything else, so we're good. Uh, but you still want to watch, because some of them vapors can come out of them jams and uh, under the hood, stuff like that. So go easy on the, out, on the inside. We'll let this set up, we'll put a couple more coats on and then we'll be candying it. So I'm thinking we're gonna go with about five coats, six coats of candy on the outside. So we'll have to base that off of when we're doing the jams now. So it's coming along. I can't wait to see it. We got two coats of the base on. We're gonna put one more uh, dust coat on and then we'll be candy in it. So stay tuned. Everything's coming around looking real good. And uh, we're gonna be candy in here in a minute. So all this time now, we finally get to see what we're actually doing here with this candy. And you guys can get a good look at this color. So it's beautiful. And I think you guys will really like it. So. We'll give this one more dust coat and then we'll be candy in the uh, jams up on it. with the KU100 hardener and the reducer. And this is the UK01 going over my custom silver. So we're using the DV1 with the 1.4 in it, with the C1 so we get a flat coat because I want to break this candy up like I know it needs to be done. So here we go, let's do it.
coat on and look at that color. I'll tell you, I ain't done a candy in a while, but that smell of that candy house of colors, you'll never forget it once you spray it one time. As soon as I picked up the mask, it brought back 20 years ago. So I'm happy and check it out. One coat, don't go crazy on the coats with the candy. Put it on nice and even and uh, don't go rushing it on. Take it slow, put it on, get around all your edges and areas because every move you make changes it. So you gotta go from all angles, especially around hinges and different hinges inside the door jam. So take it easy, don't go rushing it on. Take your time and uh, we're gonna be looking at wine here in a minute. After the third one, I said I'm gonna put one more just to make sure that we're good, but look at this color. Look how beautiful it looks. This thing looks really, really brilliant, but also very deep and dark, so unbelievable color. I'm glad I chose this one. So we're all done with the candy part, and now we're gonna get ready to clear it. So let's put two coats of clear on it and I'll show it to you guys all said and done. And I wanted to let you know that DV1 works unbelievable for the candy. Any of you guys spraying the candies out there, that thing lays it out, breaks it up, puts it on nice and even. And what a difference from back in the old days with the older guns spraying this candy. So we're gonna be clearing this one with the DV1, with the CC200, and uh, we're gonna put the two coats of it on, so let's do it. So that's all done and I'm really loving that color. Let me know what you guys think of it. So that was four coats of the UK01 over a custom mix of the water base with the uh, 3M gun at 1.4 head. And then we went right into the DV1 with the 1.4 for the candy and the clear coat. So we used CC200 on it with the US4 and the 90 reducer. You know my favorite combination. So look at this color. It's dark, but it pops like you wouldn't believe. I don't know how it looks in the video, but beautiful color, very rich looking. And I'm already in love with it. So we got the Wine 72 Cutlass, and uh, this thing's gonna be phenomenal when it's all done. Look how that color pops when you hit it with the light. And then look how dark it gets.
So I hope you guys liked it. I'm in love with it. And let me know what you guys think of it. Leave some comments. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. And you guys that watch the channel often, share the video and give it a thumbs up.